Hello everyone, happy Friday. This is Audrey. I want to share a few of the date time actions that I had forgotten about before. These are built in shortcuts. And what I've noticed in kind of talking to other groups of people that some people haven't noticed that we pulled out some of the date time advanced expressions into actions to make it easier for you to manage date and time conversions and so on. So because I saw so many people that hadn't noticed this, I figured I'd post a video and let you see it kind of firsthand. So let's go back to flow and take a look at what this looks like. So I have here a flow set up with just a manual trigger. And as you know, our triggers have a lot of data about the person who presses the button, such as the timestamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a compose here because I can't run a flow with at least without at least one action and one trigger. And so this particular action will just pull out what's the timestamp, okay? Let's save this flow and let's test it so that we can see what we get out of that. And so I'm gonna run that flow and we're gonna look at the JSON that comes out of Compose. So basically this is the date time, okay? Now, let's look at it kind of break it apart a little bit because it doesn't look like a normal everyday date time does it it's kind of in a special format the beginning of this being the date the next part being hour minutes and seconds so this is like hours minutes so this is kind of meaning time right here time and then hours minutes and seconds and then i guess these are milliseconds but i'm not 100 percent sure don't hold me to what this is at the end here I think they're milliseconds, but I'm not sure. So what's important to me usually is the date and the time right there. But this is not my current date and time. I promise you it's Friday night, June 28th. Why is it like that? Because we're always looking at what's called this kind of a coordinated universal time. All right. So what if I want to turn this into real like now for me, I have to convert it to specific time because that's where I am in the world. I'm in Seattle. So I'm going to go ahead and look at these date time actions here. These are built in actions were added for you. And I'm going to start with convert time zone because it's really the one I use the most. And I'm going to put that timestamp in as the base time, which is like the start time. Here's what we're going to work with time. And then what is the source time zone? In my case, this is coordinated universal time at 11. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, it may be a different one, but you'd pick that source time zone, which is the coordinated universal time for where you are. And then the destination time zone is what you want to see. Like, okay, here's what I, this is the time I want to see as if I was looking at my phone or my watch. And then how do you want to see it? Hey, let's take away the whole Y, 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 M, 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 H, H story, and let's let you pick it, right? So you can just find the format that you like in the picture, and then you can test this. So the compose here is right out of the button, and this is that universal time, coordinated universal time. We're going to test this. And if we open this one, we see that 629, 548 in the morning. But if you open this one, which took in that number as a base, but wants to convert it to UTC 11 for specific time, now we get my actual time. And yes, I'm up this late, but I did take a nap this afternoon. So this is what I want. And so I had to like use the convert time zone to get me to what I wanted to see. Now, this is not just for me to see this now, but I could use it in um, a post that I'm making in, for instance, if I wanted to post something to Teams saying this is now, I could post this to Teams and it would be the, the, the Pacific time that I want to be there, okay? Now, a couple of other things we might wanna look like at in date time. Let's open this up. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong one. Let's do date time and click that blue one. And now we use this one. But what if we want to add some time to that, right? 
I can click add to time. This is one that I use a lot. I'm actually going to put that converted time in there, which is my time now. And I'm going to add seven days. I'm going to save this. Now you might expect that when I do that, you'll get seven days from today in specific time. And you do. There's July 5th, which is seven days from June 28th. But you lost your formatting, didn't you? So this can happen sometime. You have a couple of choices. You could use convert time zone and just convert it from Pacific to Pacific. That way you could pick your date. Um, so let's try that real quick just to see if my if my hack will work because this is kind of like a hack. I'm cheating because I want to use the built-in function. So I'm converting what I got here, um, add to time. I'm actually saying it is currently in Pacific time and I want it to stay in Pacific time. But the only reason I'm doing this is so I can get this format that I want back again right so if i test this it's kind of a cheat um because our add to time doesn't have formatting so i can just use the convert and keep it the same time zone and i get the formatting back that i want so it's just a little cheat the other way you could do it is you could combine it with your advanced functions so i can go in here and choose compose and then from the compose pick that data operation. And now I'm back in my expressions here, but you might be comfortable with format date time. If you are, what you would do is in between those quotes, you'd put that add to time, calculated time. And then at the end of that um, sentence, uh, I'm sorry, I must have accidentally not put it in between the parens. So just make sure you put it in between the parens. And then I'm just going to do comma, and my format's going to be month, 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 always capital so it's not minutes, and then DD for day, and YYY for year. And I can also do H for time and small m's for minutes. And that's it. And now if I test this, now it will be formatted. So I kind of like my cheat better. You know me, I'm always hacking something easier, right? But you still get the same kind of result. In this case, I'm specifically changing it to MMM, DD, YYYY, and hours and minutes, okay? So you can do either one, okay? Let's talk about what else we can do. I guess at this point, I want to clearly explain, and you probably didn't need me to, Oh, yep. You probably didn't need me to, but subtract from time is not any different from add to time. The only difference is we're going backwards from the base time that we put in there. So if I put the convert time zone, the first one in here, and I do an interval of two days, now I'm going to go backwards in time. Okay? That's the only difference between add and subtract. Okay, um, so basically I've gone through the ones that are pretty much self-evident. Again, I've lost my format. I can go do my cheat, which is convert to time zone three, specific to Pacific and pick my format, or I can compose and use format date time to format that date. So the only last things that I didn't tell you about in here, let's go back in and get our date built-in functions. I did this one, this one, and this one. I didn't do these three. So I want to explain these carefully. So current time literally means the date time right now. And notice that current time does not allow me to put a base time in. Why is that? Well, because current time has to do with what is the time that this action is going to run? At that moment that this action is going to run, it could be as a result of a condition, it could be an approval just got completed, and now we want to capture that time. We can just drop that current time down, and we've got the time that that approval finished. So if I had put, if I had right here, 
for instance, I mean, there's a couple of reasons that I would use this. I don't actually use this one often, but when I start and wait for an approval, when this approval is done, so we've got a response, whatever the case may be, just put whatever right now, cause I'm not trying to run an approval really. When this response gets done, because it's starting and waiting for an approval. So this is waiting. So your flow, when it's running, it will wait right here until this approval process is done. As soon as it's done, then this would kick in. So you've just captured the time that that response was received right here, right? So right here, this time will not mean anything until you get there, right? So it doesn't receive any inputs, but let's say we want to calculate a deadline based on when the response is received from person a, right? We would calculate that deadline as X amount of days after the moment in time that this current time is. So at that point, that's where we would need the next set of date time options, which is get future time, get past time. And so future and past are relative to current. Otherwise, you would most likely use add or subtract to because you're going to place a baseline date down and then you're add and subtract from that. Does that all make sense? I hope so. If it doesn't, put your questions down there on the bottom and let me know so I can hook you up. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. This was the last thing I wanted to share today. Um, although next week I want to do a little uh, demo on some of our approval options that you have and how you can really like take that to the next level as well. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I enjoy sharing these expressions with you and these tips about our advanced expressions because it will save you time. As soon as you say, we no longer need this, we got expressions, I will move on to the next thing that you want. You have a wonderful week, and I'll be talking to you at the next Friday Functions video.